Coming up on this edition of Sports Extra, a football game on the road means a whole new world to explore. Back by popular demand, heels on the bus. Ah, what a beautiful sound. Carolina climbed all the way to the top of the Coastal Division. But with the game against Duke coming up, will the heels stay there and keep the beloved victory bell? And no, this isn't middle school, but these Carolina students sure know how to cha-cha real smooth. All that and more Sports Extra starts right now. From the University of North Carolina School of Media and Journalism, covering the full range of Tar Heel athletics, this is Sports Extra. Hello, everybody. Just because the clocks rolled back this weekend doesn't mean we won't move forward with another edition of Sports Extra. I'm Luis Fernandez. And I'm Rivers Upchurch. While kids across the country rock trick-or-treats this weekend, our student-athletes rock some kicks and cleats. We have plenty of highlights, news, and analysis for you. First, let's start with some breaking news. UNC cornerback Brian Walker has left the team. Walker started all 12 games last season and had a team-high three interceptions in 2014. Head coach Larry Fedora said Walker left the team because he wants more playing time. Walker has 12 tackles in seven appearances this season. No word about where he plans to play next. Walker didn't take the trip to Pittsburgh, but the rest of the team did to play the Panthers. They went all the way up to the big catch-up bottle, and you know what? Both teams were sitting atop of the ACC Coastal at the time with perfect records. Mark Reese Williams put together a throwing clinic against Pitt. Two touchdowns, 270 yards, and 71 came on this play. Williams says, get off me. Woo! And he steps up and throws a dime to Ryan Switzer in stride. Oh my goodness. You cannot hold him down, not even by his face mask. Face mask. Let's take a look at that again. Classic scramble drill where Ryan Switzer sprints upfield. Never even has to slow down. That's football at its perfection right there. Touchdown number two went to Mac Hollins. Great dig route by Hollins. And then he runs upfield and Superman flies into the end zone. On this throw here, Williams had no fear in his heart. He rolls out and lofts it between all these defenders. Wow, I don't know whether that was a great play or just really stupid. But you know, when he's playing like that, the football team might be top 25 in the country. We call that foreshadowing. Final score, 26-19, Carolina. And now. For the first time since week two of the 2014 season, UNC is ranked in the top 25 of the AP poll. It took a road win against a ranked team, but they did it. The Tar Heels are now 21st in both the AP and coaches polls. With a 7-1 overall record, the Heels are still undefeated in conference play. With four games left, UNC has some time to uh, make moves up in the rankings. Carolina football was on the road, so you know what that means. It's time for another installment of Heels on the Bus. Here's Paul Beam. The heels were in the Steel City, and I wasn't about to miss an opportunity to catch a football game at Heinz Field, even if I did have to rock my band uniform to do it. The NFL's Pittsburgh Steelers have won six Super Bowls thanks to great players like Terry Bradshaw, Mean Joe Green, and the bus, Jerome Bettis. And the Pitt Panthers have been even better in college football. They've won nine national titles, and let's not forget that Pitt was the old stomping ground of Dan Marino, Larry Fitzgerald, and Revis Island. Yeah, this was news to me. But this isn't a history lesson. There was a football game, too. Matt Collins excited the Carolina section of the stadium with the Superman dive into the end zone. Yeah, the band liked that. And would it be heels on the bus without food? I took a bite out of a famous Permonte Brothers ham and cheese sandwich. How'd it taste? I think I enjoyed it. My sandwich was satisfying, and so was Carolina picking up the win. The football team had a question, though. We got your back, guys. In Pittsburgh, I'm Paul Bean, reporting. Man, Paul has so much fun on those trips. I got to get a seat on the band bus next time. Michigan, Michigan State. Georgia, Tech, and Florida State. It seems every week there's a college football game with an unbelievable ending. And on Halloween, Miami had more tricks than treats. With a three-point lead and six seconds remaining, all Duke had to do was stop a kickoff return to remain undefeated in the ACC. 
Duke squibs the kick to keep the ball away from the return man, and the Canes, well, they start chucking laterals like it's a rugby game. 40 seconds, and eight laterals later, this happens. In midfield, it's still going, it's Cornell there. He's at the 40 yard line. Come on, oh, baby! He runs the He's at the 20, he's at the 10, at the 5, he scores, he scores, Cornell scores. It's a touchdown, it's a touchdown. The refs take a long look at the replay. Here's what they think. After review, there was never a knee down by any of the runners of Miami. Ooh, but take a look at this picture. The Miami player's knee is definitely down. What did the Canes think? Eh, well, I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles. Deserved or not, Duke's loss gives Carolina first place in the ACC Coastal. And just like that, the Coastal Division is completely different. Let's go ahead and check it out. With the win against Pitt, UNC cruised into a one-game lead in the division. The Heels are the only team left with an unblemished conference record and control their own destiny for a spot in the ACC title game in Charlotte. Joining us now is football analyst Amanda Lee. Amanda, Keenan is already sold out. It's a big game. What are the chances Duke knocks Carolina off that top spot Saturday? Well, Lewis, if they do it, it's going to be on the shoulders of junior quarterback Thomas Sirk. The dual threat QB is the key to the Blue Devils attack, leading the team in both passing and rushing yards. As a first year starter, Cirque has thrown for almost 1,800 yards, completing 60% of his passes. He's also a running threat, averaging about four and a half yards per carry. Cirque has three rushing touchdowns, including the game winner against Virginia Tech two weeks ago. Of the 30 touchdowns Duke has scored this season, Cirque is responsible for 15 of them. That's 50% for the math challenged among us. So we know Cirque isn't afraid to run the ball. Let's take a look at how UNC's defense has played against rushing QBs. Of the yards Carolina has allowed this season, less than 17% have come from opposing quarterbacks, a total of just 276 yards. QBs are averaging 3.2 yards per carry and have rushed for four scores. So even though the Heels haven't been stellar against the run this season, they've done a pretty good job containing quarterbacks trying to extend plays with their legs. They'll need to do the same on Saturday against Cirque. So we've talked a lot about defense today, and that's because Duke and UNC both have strong defenses. Let's see how they stack up against each other. Duke allows about 16 points per game. That's 11th best in the country. The Blue Devils passing defense is seventh in the nation, allowing 166.1 yards per game. Duke is strong against the run, too. The Blue Devils allow 128.9 yards per game, which is 30th in the country. But Carolina's defense isn't too shabby either. The Heels allow 17 points per game, only about a point more than Duke. UNC wins the battle in the air, ranking fourth in passing defense, allowing only 153.6 yards per game. The glaring difference between the teams is rushing defense. Remember, Duke allows about 130 yards per game, well, Carolina allows more than 200. That's 101st in the country and not very good. The defenses are pretty similar, but the difference is going to be on offense. Carolina scores more points, puts out more yards, and Lewis, the combo of Elijah Hood and Marquise Williams is going to be tough to stop. Good points, Amanda. The only team that scores more points per game than UNC in the ACC is Clemson. That's pretty good company. Amanda Lee dropping some knowledge. Thanks. Let's go live now to Keenan Stadium. Jordan Black is there for more lead up to the battle against Duke for Coastal Division Supremacy. Jordan. Saturday's game after a record breaking weekend and more records could fall against Duke. Quinshaw Davis now has caught more passes than anyone in the history of North Carolina football. Davis broke Tar Heel great Hakeem Nick's records of 181 catches and with three catches at Thursday's game, Davis now has 183 career receptions. With five games to go, Davis has a legitimate shot at 200 career catches. And Marquise Williams is making a mark in the record books too. He topped 2,000 career rushing yards Thursday night and now has a career 2,036, which ranks 13th among all rushers in school history and fifth in rushing touchdowns by a QB in the ACC. And if one is good, then more is better. Williams is on his way to breaking another record. The QB needs just one touchdown to tie Darian Durant and two to pass him. Williams has racked up 78 TD during his time in Chapel Hill. Even though Williams might break a huge record on the field this weekend, records break all the time. But Michael Coe tells us about one tradition between Carolina and Duke that has stayed the same throughout the years. 
Carolina Duke. When the Heels and Devils meet on the gridiron, the schools not only compete for bragging rights, but also the hallowed victory bell. Whoever wins gets to take it home. But does anyone know where the bell actually comes from? I'm afraid I don't. I feel it's something I should know. No. Uh, I actually have no idea. Heck, even I don't know where the victory bell comes from. And that is a big problem. Fortunately for me, there's lecturer Fred Kiger, who has studied the Duke-UNC rivalry for more than 40 years. The victory bell came from two cheerleaders. Uh, it was Loring Jones of Duke and Norman Spear, the cheerleader from North Carolina. The model was designed by the Duke cheerleader Jones. Spear came up with an old bell from an old locomotive. They put it together, bring it out, and in 1948, 1949, the victory bell emerges. The bell carries a lot of importance for the players. You know, every school has their tradition. Uh, Clemson has, I think it's called what, Howard's Rock that they hit on the way out. Uh, Notre Dame has the sign they hit on the way out. And it's kind of a thing that we have here that the cheerleaders are going to ride the bell out and ring it on the way out. So it's, it's kind of a thing that kind of brings us into the field. And it's a really cool experience. The coolest experience for the Heels would be retaining ownership of the bell for another whole year. In Chapel Hill, I'm Michael Coe reporting. Carolina leads the, ser the Bell Series 41, 21, and 1. And since 1980, Rivers, Duke has won in Chapel Hill only five times. Very tall and not at all bossy, Jordan Black, live at Keenan Stadium, getting ready for the big showdown at noon on Saturday. Thanks, Jordan. It's almost basketball season, which means we'll hear about Kennedy Meeks' weight for the rest of the year. Now, in case you're wondering, Meeks has lost another 15 pounds, while Justin Jackson put on 15 more. Both players and Coach Roy Williams are confident that their new frames will help the team's overall strength. What I'm capable of as far as me, whether it's dunking the ball or me executing um, in the post as much as I can, me running the floor a lot more, or as far as me even playing 30-minute games or wherever it may be, I just think I, I'm capable of doing that now. I'm in, a, I'm in a great position for me and my team. And then offensively, guys aren't able to bump me off my path. Um, whenever I'm trying to drive or whatever it is. So I think that's probably the biggest um, translation into my game. Body mass, weight, and all those kind of things helps you on the backboard, helps you defensively, helps you. As you're driving the ball to the basket, at the slightest contact can knock you off balance. And the next year you have enough strength to make that drive and the slightest contact doesn't cause you anything. I think that's a huge positive. The hype is still building for this year's team. The preseason AP poll just came out today, and UNC is ranked number one, ahead of Kentucky, Maryland, Kansas, and at number five, Duke. You either leave the game in the eighth inning as the hero, or stay in long enough to see yourself become the villain. Despite a great effort from the Dark Knight, Gotham is burning, next on Sports Extra. Matt Harvey, World Series Game 1 starter, a former Tar Heel, and evidently a pretty popular guy here in the Triangle. We're here at Rookie Sports Bar in Durham, where the New York Mets Triangle Fans Club is meeting to watch former Tar Heel Matt Harvey take the bump for the New York Mets in Game 1 of the World Series. You know, Harvey just, you can tell he wants to win. He's out there, he's a competitor, and I, you know, you got the sense in the postseason he would do whatever it takes. I think we've got a great chance he looked great on the last outing. Um, he's got a bunch of supporters here tonight, and I'm sure plenty more at UNC, so he has the backing to make it work tonight. The game got off to a rough start for Harvey and the Mets, but like a true ace, the Dark Knight bounced back. Matt Harvey, after giving up an inside the park home run on his very first pitch of the game, has buckled down and dominated this Royals lineup. Only one hit since his first pitch. WRAL chief meteorologist and diehard Mets fan Greg Fischel joined the group to root on his beloved team. Everybody's coming down to meet the METS Mets of New York Town. There's just been so many uh, fairy tale moments this year. Uh, you know, I think back to the Wilmer Flores thing where he's, uh, you know, in tears because he thinks he's been traded. And then he hits a walk off home run two nights later against the Nationals. Unfortunately for Fischel and the Mets fans, there was no fairy tale ending. Harvey was hit hard in the sixth inning, and the Mets lost the game four to three. 
After a disappointing end to a relatively good Game 1 performance, Matt Harvey would get the ball again for the New York Mets in Game 5 with a chance for the Dark Knight to rise. The hero Gotham deserves was dealing early on. Through eight innings, he was pitching a shutout with nine strikeouts. Eric Hosmer's like, I didn't know it was coming, I swear to God. But Matt Harvey walks off the mound like, swear to me. Harvey had to, well, negotiate with manager Terry Collins to stay in the game, but the Cape Crusader would not have a storybook ending. I wondered what would break first, your spirit or your body? He allowed this double and got pulled, and the Royals would go on to win game five in 12 innings and take the World Series four games to one. So while Matt Harvey couldn't bring home hardware this season, another Diamond Heel was recognized for his superb pitching efforts. Current Yankees closer Andrew Miller was named the 2015 Mariano Rivera uh, Award winner given to the best reliever in the American League. Miller finished the season with 36 saves in 38 attempts. He also finished with the second lowest earned run average of Yankees relievers with a 2.04 ERA. You've got to provide the man with run support. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Well, the women's soccer team took its talents to South Beach for a spooky Halloween showdown this Saturday. Start of the first half, Miami defender slips like she's playing Mario Kart. Whoop! Megan Buckingham and Summer Green take advantage. 1-0 heels. On to the second half, that's when Jessie Scarpa had this superb first touch. Oh my goodness. She speeds past the defender, slots the pass back to Alexa Newfield for an easy tap into the net. Giving her Newfield her ninth goal of the season. Take another look as Scarpa turns on the afterburners to get there, sets up her teammate for a clinical finish. Final score, 2-0 heels. The fifth-ranked men's soccer team took a road trip to Charlottesville for a Friday night matchup. The Heels came away with a draw after neither team could score through two overtimes. UNC keeper James Pyle made his first start since October 20th and came up, came up with four big saves. Carolina played with 10 men for the last 13 minutes of OT after Allen Wynn picked up a red card. Home court dominance continues for the volleyball team. UNC went to 2-0 this weekend. Today's magic numbers are 3-1. and one. In a four-set fight, the Heels put it on the 23rd-ranked Louisville Cardinals, handing them their first loss in the ACC. Carolina was on point the entire night with shots like this from 6'3 fresh, uh, redshirt freshman Taylor Leaf. Not only did the Heels slam it home, but they had the soft touch going too. Look at this. Oh, that's sweet. Heels win three sets to one. Your magic numbers. From the top of the ACC to the bottom, Carolina squared off against Notre Dame. Big plays like that one from Taylor Tracy helped, take, helped the Heels take the first two sets. Tracy was explosive the entire match, leading the team with a career-high 18 kills. Victoria McPherson dominated the fourth set and helped Carolina beat the Irish. Carolina is now third in the ACC, one game out of first place. Rifling a pass, firing a rocket, a real sharp shooter. When Sports Extra returns, we look at some actual firepower. Seniors weren't the only ones celebrating a win against Old Dominion on Senior Day as a familiar face returned for a historic moment. First, let's look at some goals like this slick inside pass from Nina Notman to Gab Major. Soon after, Lauren Moyer feeds the ball to Sam Knight for this killer backhanded shot. The Heels took seven corners, finally scoring off this sweet pass from Major to Ashley Hoffman. Team honored veteran player Kelsey Cole to Jay Chick at halftime. The four-time All-American now plays for the U.S. national team, but will always remember her Tar Heel roots. Final score, 5-1 to one Heels. The Tar Heels cross-country team went down to Tallahassee this weekend for the ACC Championships. Caroline Alcorta raced to a 12th place finish, leading the women's side to a 5th place finish overall. Mark Derrick earned all ACC honors, crossing the finish line in 21st, while the men's side ended up 9th overall. UNC's next race will be the three-stripe Invitational in Raleigh on Saturday. So, field hockey was really rifling some shots in there, Lewis. Well, you know, it kind of reminds me of a gun club on campus, and, uh, you know, we're not talking about your two favorite sports extra anchors. <sighs> Jan Jung has more. The gunshots come from a group of highly focused UNC students. When it comes to potentially dangerous weapons, everyone is on his or her best behavior. You have to be really careful with what you're doing. You can't be 
absent-minded. First priority is definitely safety. We give every member a safety class before they're even allowed to go to the range. And even then, we have the range leader. She teaches safety class right before just to make sure everyone's safe. We have RSOs, range safety officers. No one has ever been hurt on any of our range trips, which is great. And we'd like to continue that. Because of the irresistible temptation of the provocative sounds of the gunshots, I tried my hand at target shooting under the close watch of the president of the Tar Heel Rifle and Pistol Club. It did feel liberating, though my shoulder is not built for that. The welcoming environment of the club is made obvious through the hands-on experience as well as the diversity of the club's members. My name is Barbara. I come from Slovakia. I'm spending my semester here as an exchange student with Kinen Flagrov Business School. I'm never going to have a chance to touch a gun if not here. So basically, I was searching for a pistol club here. We're kind of unique in that regard. There isn't really any organization that takes students on a large scale basis like we do. By nature, this is a very political topic, um, but we're here to take the politics out of it. This sport teaches a shooter to reach a controlled, peaceful inner state in a noisy environment. And that is something beneficial for a lot of people trying to deal with the stress of school and work. In Apex, I'm Jen Zhang reporting. If those gunshots excite you too, the membership fee is only $5 every, from every semester for as many range trips as you sign up for. Keep this in mind, safety always comes first. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Freeze! Everybody clap your hands for the UNC Ballroom Dance Team. When Quartz Extra returns. There was no trick-or-treating for one group of Tar Heels. The ballroom dance team members spent their Halloween weekend competing in Washington, D.C. at the D.C. Dance Sport Inferno. Haley Ray takes, us, takes a look at how the team prepares to take on the competition. Students join UNC's ballroom dance team to stay fit and twirl away stress. And when it comes to competitions, the dancers buckle down to bring home ribbons. My favorite part about competing is winning. Um, <laughs> everything else is not acceptable. <laughs> and when they do, the team attended the Carolina Fall Classic in October. The Tar Heel dancers won two first place ribbons, two second place ribbons, and five third place ribbons. This success does take a little extra preparation and dedication. So to prepare for competition, one thing that we would do differently is um, do rounds more often. So if we do um, a Latin round, it would be samba, cha-cha, rumba, jive, all back to back, 90 seconds a piece. And that just, you know, you have to work really hard and do it full out so that you're prepping for the actual competition day. Some team members join with no previous dance experience, but that doesn't stop them from taking the stage and fox trotting their skills for the judges. Newcomers get the chance to whirl and twirl at the next event, the DC Dance Sport Inferno. Uh, this will be my first competition but I did go and watch CFC last competition, so I sort of have an idea of what it's going to be like, and I'm excited. We actually had a mock competition this Sunday, so we got to do a full dress rehearsal, dress up, look fancy. It doesn't seem like nerves are an issue for these dancers. With that confidence and hard work, the team could be adding to its ribbon collection. In Chapel Hill, I'm Haley Ray reporting. That does it for this edition of Sports Extra. Thanks for watching. Good night.